Okay, good morning class. Um, I have recorded the lecture for today because I am not in Cedar Rapids. I'm in New York City. I'm either asleep after a night of dancing or I uh, am in a museum. So I hope you're having a great day and you have the best sub in the whole wide world. This is Benda. Today we're going to talk about color schemes, number 20. So you should have your red books out. You should have your scratch paper ready to take notes. Um, and away, away we go. So I'm going to put the, for the, for this particular um, graphic organizer, I'm going to put the color schemes in the middle. And what page, look at your packets, what page should you be turned to? And you are saying to your partner, tell your partner, you are looking on page 144. So they're called color schemes. Also, I'm going to give you another name that's not in your book. They're also called color harmonies. So write that down. And once again, if you don't have you turned in your red book, turn to page 144. Okay, with your partner, look on um, the page and see if you can find the de definition. Um, color schemes, uh, see if you can find the definition. And when you think of color harmonies, when you think of harmony, when you sing, um, in harmony, it sounds good because you've chosen notes or pitches or sounds that go together. Likewise, um, with color schemes or color harmonies, depending on the colors that you pick, um, you're going to express different kinds of feelings, ideas, um, etc. based on the colors you pick. You'll get a different, different thing. So look at what you're wearing right now that is a color scheme and you might have a, a color scheme on right now that's more subtle so maybe you used all the same colors and doesn't jump out at you um, you might have chosen one with with if you have if somebody's wearing something today that's every color in the rainbow that's going to have a, a different different mood a different expression than somebody that's wearing all the same color so, you should have found the definition in your book, right here, is a plan for organizing color schemes, um, so, or for organizing colors according to their relationship on the color wheel. Um, and why color schemes? In your book, again, it says, by following a color scheme, you can avoid putting together colors in a confusing or unpleasant way. So, sometimes you want it to convey confusion, and then maybe you would use a color scheme. So um, go ahead and write down the definition, a plan for organizing colors. And I'm going to run out of space. Organizing, that's why we take notes on scratch paper, colors according to the relationship on the color wheel. According to their relationship, make sure you spell your words right if you can't read this. You know where to look in your book. All right, so let me show you some examples right now. Here's one. Uh -oh doesn't show up very well. Let me adjust the, uh, the lighting here. Let's see. Now oh, I clicked on the car. I don't know what the car does. 
Now I see it focuses it. It's the drive. And I can see right through this piece of paper. So let me. So here's one with not a lot of, of colors. Let me zoom out just a little bit. Oops. No. That's the best I can do. Let's see if I can lift up my. There we go. All right, so here's one. Sorry, you can't see the whole thing. Um, here's another one with similar colors, fairly peaceful. Um, here's one, a smaller one I wanted to show you by Escher. And you've got more contrasting colors here. Um, the same thing here. Most of these are in your book. So based on the colors you choose, you're going to have different kinds of moods. And we'll come back to these. I'm just going to show you some different images. I'm not going to talk about them right now. And as I said, a lot of them are in your book. Very famous piece by Picasso. And here's another George L. Key. Okay, so the first, um, first we're going to just define some color schemes. So one of the ones we're going to describe is a monochromatic color scheme. Make sure I'm in the camera here. So go ahead and draw a box for that one. Monochromatic. Mono, you've probably heard that word in some context, whether it be monocle. Anybody know what a monocle is? Um, so um, when we talk about mono, sometimes we're talking about a disease. Um, if you can think of some other ways, mono. But mono means one, and chrome means color. So you can probably guess. And if you look on page 144, you will see the definition for monochromatic. So go ahead and write that down. Uses only one hue and you can also use and the tints and shades. Of that hue. Okay, so there's one. Um, another one we're going to do, we're just going to do four, but there are many. Keep that in mind. These are not the only color schemes, color harmonies. The next one I'm going to call your attention to is called analogous. Spell it correctly and a a-N-A-L-O-G-O-U-S. And that is on the next page, page 145, which is on um, the definition is right there. So go ahead and write that down. And that says colors that sit side-by-side side on the color wheel and have a common hue. So what do we mean by sitting side by side on the color wheel? I'm going to turn to the color wheel in our book. So um, 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 an analogous color scheme could use the colors red, red-orange, orange-yellow, and yellow-orange, for example. That would be an analogous. Or you could use um, orange, red-orange, red-violet, violet. So that would be an um, analogous color scheme. Or you could go all the way around the color wheel 
as long as they're right next to each other. And usually it's three to four colors. So these would be some examples. I'm kind of blocking out the others of some analogous color schemes. Okie doke. Next one I want to call your attention to, and we'll draw a box up on top. is going to be complementary. Now, make sure you spell this right. All right, there's two kinds of, they sound the same, there's complementary, and then there's a complement. I'll spell that for you here. Those are different. Compliment is when you tell uh, Miss Brenda that she's the best sub, sub ever in the entire world. That's a compliment. A compliment, on the other hand, with an E, means that something is the opposite of the other. And lots of times you'll say they're a good couple, they go together well because they complement each other, which means maybe one, one person in the couple is shy and one person in the couple is outgoing. So they would complement each other because they're opposite. And that's the kind of complement we're talking about here. So right here on page 146 is your definition of complementary colors. Um, there's the definition. Strongest uh, a pair of high. It doesn't just. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't define it here. I think it does earlier. So I will tell you the definition. Complementary um, uses. Oops, can't see it. Uses two colors that are opposite. on the color wheel. So if you want to know what a complement, I guess we talked about complements the other day when we were talking about intensity because that's how you dull a color. Um, so the complement of yellow would be violet. The complement of green would be red. The complement of red orange would be blue green, etc. So you just, just use two, two colors opposite each other. And of course, you can always use, you can, I, I haven't written it down, but for any of these, um, you can use the tints and the shades. So you could add white to these two colors. So you could have red and green, which we complements, and then pink, which is just a tint of red. So um, let's see if I've got room for that. plus, we'll put it this way, plus tints and shades. So is it still, as long as, it, as long as you just add white or black to it, it's still the hue. Um, and again, down here, I don't have much room, plus tints and shades. Okay, I'm going to give you one more color scheme. And as I said, there are many, but I don't want to confuse fuse you too much so we're going to we're going to limit it and the last color scheme we're going to talk about is a triad color scheme tri meaning whoops i don't need to put that just put triad line okay try if you think of tricycle if you think of um, what else? Tri, triangle, etc. Um, and this again is on page 146 for color triads composed of three colors spaced at equal distance apart on the color wheel. So, three colors spaced evenly apart. on the color wheel. A 
Okay, in your book, I think this diagram's a little confusing. It's showing you two triad color schemes. So an example of a triad color scheme would be, see where that red mark is in the middle? Red, yellow, and blue would be an example of a triad color scheme. Okay, and then see the, see the black arrows here? So if I cross out these, you've got orange, green, and violet would be another example of a triad color scheme. So as long as there's spaces between them, let me go back to the color wheel here. So if I start here with yellow and go space, 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 and then I go to red, space, 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 and then blue, those would be my three colors. Likewise, I could start with yellow, green, and go space, 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 red, orange, space, 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 uh, blue, violet. So that would be one. So there's four, poss or four possible tri triad color schemes. Okay. So the next thing we need to do, oh, and one thing I'm going to add up here, just a kind of a little note. Any of these color schemes, you can add, you can always add white and black without changing, this is without changing the color scheme because those are not on the color wheel. So those are, those are neutral colors, which we talked about the other day. So those can be added without. So you could have red and green and white or red and green and black or red and green and black and white and it's still a complementary color scheme. Okay. So what are these, how do these colors, how do these colors schemes express things differently? Um, well, what's going to happen is the more contrast or the more difference in colors, um, the, the more lively it's going to become. So some of the examples, the two that have the most differences are going to be complementary and triad because complementary are opposite, so they're very different. Triad is... Um, colors spaced apart on the color wheel. So here's some examples. Um, you see a couple of images by Escher. Here there's not a lot of color. Um, mostly it's just black and white. So this is a more of a monochromatic. So it's, it's not quite as lively as this particular color scheme, which is a triad color scheme because it uses red um, blue and yellow. So that would be a triad color scheme. Let's see if I have another example. Oh, I know, the flags. Uh-oh, where'd they go? Here they are. So here, again, it's very bright, it's very bold, um, and this is uh, Jasper John's map. If you look closely, you see that it's a map of the United States. It's on page 296. Um, so that's triad, and then complementary is um, the example I found in your book. This is by Elizabeth Murray. It's called Things to Come. So um, she's used mostly blue now. Granted, it's almost there's a little bit of a triad there because you can see a little bit of red in here. But for the majority of the piece, this would be considered a complementary because it's blue and yellow which are opposite each other on the color wheel. Um, so this would be considered um, um, a complementary color scheme. And again, it's very lively. Now, there are other things besides the color um, scheme that make this lively. Part of it is the, way it is the lines that are used. The fact that it's a three-dimensional painting comes off the wall like that. So it's using curved lines, kind of zigzag lines. So that, that contributes to the mood also. Um, but the color is part of, of, of expressing the mood of this painting. So in general, some things that when you want to make a statement that is bold, usually I'd be asking you these things, but I'm just going to tell you because I'm not here. Um, or lively. These are some adjectives. Loud. 
These are from another class I got. In your face. Okay, when you want something to really jump out. And another one is if you use complementary colors, if you get just the right colors, they can vibrate. And I had a friend in college who had a floor, had floor tiles, and it was red and green and red and green and red and green and red and green. And I could not look down at the floor tiles because they started moving and they made my eyes cross. So these are some of the ways, these are some of the moods um, that are expressed using complementary or triad. Okay, now let's go to the other ones that are more similar because monochromatic is limiting it to one color. Analogous is when you have, again, the colors that sit side by side. So there's less, less differences when you use these kind of color schemes. A cool color scheme would be blues, violets, and greens. Those, that would be analogous. A warm would be red, yellow, and orange. That would be analogous. So you're using more similar colors. So you probably already guessed what might be the mood for those particular pieces. Um, some examples I found. This is uh, Rauschenberg. It's called red painting, and it's not showing up really well color-wise um, from, from my vantage point. I don't know what it'll look like when you show this, but you see some reds in here, some oranges, some yellows. Um, so it is not as lively. It's bold because red is a bold color, but again, limiting the colors um, changes the mood. Um, another one, and this is very appropriate because the title of this is called Loneliness uh, by Alice Neals. You've got yellows, you've got kind of some more orangish yellows, you've got reds in, the, reds in the chairs. This particular one is on page 292 if you want to look at it and see a better image probably. Um, so again, it's, it's more of a quiet piece. Um, a, uh, another one that's in your book is by Pablo Picasso, The Tragedy. Um, that is a monochromatic, and darn it, I can't get the whole thing in here. So, um, but again, very quiet mood. You, you know, when you think about what this sounds like, um, you probably don't hear much noise at all. Even the background, you know that's kind of the, the uh, waves up against the beach, but look at how subtle they are. Um, so there's a lot of things that go into this besides color to express that mood. Um, another one that's not your book, um, Hiroshigi, a very famous Japanese printmaker. And this is, he does have one on page 330. This is called Takanawa. And mostly it's used blues, blue-greens, yellows, greens next to each other. It does have a little bit of a little accent there of red and then the seals. Those are the artist's signatures, wouldn't really be part of the piece. But again, it gives a very peaceful um, kind of feeling. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was Georgia O'Keeffe's, which is this is pretty much monochromatic, mostly blues and greens. And then I found another image that of the same, um, same painting, uh, basically, and I don't know if this is a different version or somebody colored on the internet. I haven't had a chance to research it. But you can see where they've added more contrasting colors. You kind of have your blue and your yellow here. So this is a little bit more lively, less subtle, less calm and quiet than this one. So those are some examples of, of color schemes that would be either monochromatic, well, using only one color, or analogous colors that sit side by side. So what would be some adjectives? And these are not the only adjectives. These are just some. OK, it's, um, but these are ones that I've gotten from pre previous classes. One would be plain, simple, peaceful, quiet, just the opposite of what the other two ones. Calm, maybe formal. So we could call this informal up here. All right, so what I want you to know 
is the different color schemes. Let me see if I can, uh, I cannot zoom out any further out. I'm just going to lift up, bear with me, I'm going to lift up the projector, put it back up on the table where I usually have it. All right, now I can do this. Uh-oh. Computer went to sleep there for a second. Okay, so now zoom. Zoom not working. Oh, but it stopped. 